I, I recently That's correct. was in New York City and interviewed Jan 11 about black holes, and she really had a lot of nice things to say about That's your Jan. work and how inspiring Jan is it was. An old friend. Yeah, well, one don't believe don't believe nice things said by old friends. <laughs> uh, but one thing that we discussed is whether or not the singularity at the center of a black hole is real. Because a number of physicists I've spoken with, like Jana or Eric Verlinda, they kind of view the black hole exclusively as the horizon. Well, and I just was wondering how you think about this. Well, okay, this is also very puzzling. Um, you may say that the black hole is only what is outside the horizon. If no information ever gets lost, just say everything is outside the horizon. But you also have to ask the question, what if you fell through the horizon of the black hole? What would happen? Most people believe, most people who study gravity, and I'm certainly one of them, that would believe that very, very much like the waterfall. When the waterfall, you're flowing down the river in a rowboat, you pass the point of no return. What happens to you when you pass the point of no return? Nothing. You're just moving a little bit faster than, uh, than you can row back. If you're just floating down the river, you feel nothing. Nothing special happens at that point. That's what's believed by most physicists, at least of my, uh, uh, most physicists like myself, that if you fell through the horizon of a black hole, you would feel nothing. You would just sail through, through just like the rowboat uh, falling past the point of no return. So I don't think you can say that just forget about the inside of the black hole, just say the edge of the black hole is the horizon and there's nothing inside it. Uh, we're stuck with a puzzle. Yes, if you're outside the black hole and you always stay outside the black hole, every observation that you can ever make is consistent with the idea that there's nothing inside the black hole, just the horizon. On the other hand, if you're in a frame of reference falling through, falling in, you will pass the black hole horizon and you will have a perfectly good life, at least if the black hole is big enough, at least until you approach the singularity. Things get tough at the singularity. Yeah. That's, that's, a bad, that's a bad place. But the horizon, perfectly smooth. You know what it's like? Again, it's like the, uh, the waterfall. When you pass the point of no return in the river, that's just where the velocity of the flow is a little bit faster than you can row yourself out of. Nothing special happens. Where does the really bad stuff happen? When you go over the waterfall and crash on the rocks below. The singularity is like the rocks below. The horizon is like the point of no return. And um, uh, so I don't think it's possible just to say there's nothing inside the, the black hole horizon. An observer who falls through will see a perfectly ordinary space time on the other side. But somebody on the outside will, uh, will reckon that nothing ever went through the horizon. So it's a little bit crazy. Very counterintuitive, and we've wrestled that with that uh, pretty much uh, since I would say around 1980. Mm. I mean, the the question that immediately comes to mind is: Are there two different realities then, or are it's, just two different ways of looking at the same thing? Yeah, I think it's two different ways of looking at the same thing. Um, What happens from the outside when something falls, from the perspective from the outside, is when something falls toward the horizon, it gets all scrambled up and becomes highly inaccessible to the ordinary means of retrieving information. Information can get badly scrambled to the point where, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, you, uh, again, start with a book. And now we burn the book. Uh, everything goes up in smoke. The information in the book is lost. No, not according to the really precise rules of quantum mechanics. The really precise rules of quantum mechanics say that that information 
is there in the smoke, but very hard to retrieve. It's gotten too scrambled, it's gotten too mixed up, it's gotten too um, inaccessible. You'd have to know every molecule of smoke. You'd have to know every single atom of smoke, exactly where it is, exactly where it's moving, how fast it's moving. If you knew all of that, and remember, the number of molecules of smoke in a, in a burned book is what, 10 to the 30th or some sort of ridiculously large number. If you had the capacity to, uh, to process all of that information, you could recover whether the book was Stephen's book or my book. But it would be very, very hard, very, very complex. So in practice, you say the information is lost, but not in principle. It was thought the same thing is true of black holes. If you're on the outside of the black hole, what you see is all this hawking radiation coming out, and that hawking radiation is carrying the information of what fell in. On the other hand, if you fall through, everything is perfectly normal and the information passes to the inside. What we've kind of learned is that the inside and the outside are not two different things. They're really representations of the same thing. Is this black hole complementarity? That's black hole complementarity, that they're, that they're two different expressions of the same information. Uh, and uh, they're not, I wouldn't say they were two different realities. I would say they were two different mathematical representations of the same thing. This happens in mathematics and physics sometimes, that, uh, that different things can be expressed uh, in different form. Transformations of one thing can look very, very peculiar from, from the other point of view. And that's pretty much what we think, that, the, that what falls into the interior, which you see when you fall through, is a kind of mathematical transformation of what's seen from the outside, but both carry the same information. Yeah, that's what's called black hole complementarity. Um, and uh, that, was, that was a sort of last ditch effort to try to make sense out of these two different uh, views, but it turned out to be right. Or at least it turned out to be very consistent with what um, 80, 90, 2000, 2010, 2020, uh, 40 years ago uh, was a wild conjecture. Uh, it is now almost completely believed by the younger class of uh, physicists who study these things. Okay, just to, to push this thought experiment a little mm -hmm. bit farther of, of kind of rowing the boat and there not being this huge difference beyond yeah. this point of no return in the velocity, I've just heard that a lot of crazy things happen once you pass the event horizon of a black hole, such as the space and time coordinates flipping. And no, 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 that's... that's uh, uh, crazy things happen in the mathematics, in mm -hmm. some of the mathematics. We've learned, to what, we, we've learned what all that means. There's nothing crazy about it. Um, in certain coordinates... Even ordinary, what we call flat space-time, that means space-time with no black holes, just ordinary empty space-time. In certain coordinates, the same thing can happen. A certain coordinate, uh, which was introduced by the mathematician to describe space, it's not intrinsic to the, uh, uh, to the space-time itself. A certain coordinate can, on one side of a, of a certain line, be space-like and the other side time-like. Nothing, nothing unusual about that. It, it, um, the media may play it up as a really wild thing, but there's nothing wild going on. Um, uh, somebody falling through the horizon does not see space turn into time. Mm. He just sees space and he sees time. Okay. And if he looks out of the black hole, incidentally, he doesn't see anything very peculiar on the outside. Somebody on the in uh, right, so uh, that much is not a puzzle about space turning into time, time turning into space. That uh, 
that's a way that the media has of trying to make uh, make it sound very exotic. Okay, yeah, I was just wondering if there are any sensational changes as you in the physics as you cross the event horizon, no. but it sounds like no, no that there aren't. I mean, as perceived by the person falling through, no. Okay. If the black hole is small, then as you approach it, there are a large, what are called tidal forces. Um, but if the black hole is big enough, then the approach to the horizon is um, a non-event or an almost non-event. Mm -hmm.